Hi there, I'm Lauren Hart and I am so excited that you have chosen to pursue coaching with me. I refer to it as coaching because our relationship is going to be just that. Rather than just spouting off exercises to you and counting your repetitions, my job is to guide you through this entire process step by step, hand in hand, to make sure that you are feeling the most empowered while you reach your goals. The purpose of this video is not only to welcome you, but it's also to introduce you to the terminology and concepts you'll need to know as we're working together. Please set aside time to watch through this video in its entirety because I'll be covering everything from how we'll be communicating to safety concepts, terminology, and the technology you'll be using in our relationship together. Let's get started. Our first step in this process is to have your initial consultation. If you haven't done so already, we're going to schedule a time for us to sit and chat about your needs, your goals, and your exercise history, plus any medical history that's relevant to our relationship. Before the coaching process begins, if you haven't done so already, you'll complete your payment, and at the time of this recording, I am using Square to send out invoices. You'll receive your invoice on the same day each month, and you'll have the opportunity to pay via credit card manually, or you can set up auto pay. If you need to cease our time coaching together, please be sure to notify me 14 days before your next billing date so I can cancel your next invoice. Our next step will be getting your technology set up. I'm going to cover the specifics of each piece of technology a bit later, but the first thing you need to know is the app we will be using for our coaching relationship is called Trainerize. You'll receive a link via email to set up your Trainerize account, and you'll have the opportunity to walk through step-by-step -step how to use the app the first time you open it. I also have a plethora of how-to videos for how to use Trainerize and the other pieces of technology we'll be using, so please be sure to reference my FAQ to see those videos. Once all the housekeeping details are squared away, I'll create your program. The workout program I assigned to you is going to be based on your goals, what equipment you have available, and whether or not we're working in person or online. Your nutrition program is highly subjective and will be based on what we've discussed in our initial consultation. Once your program is created, you'll be able to start walking through all of the steps. If we are working together in person, you'll have scheduled times to come in for me to guide you through your workouts and monitor your exercise form. If you're training online, you get to train anywhere and anytime you want at your own pace and if we need to do form checks, you'll simply film yourself doing an exercise and send me the video over Trainerize. Each time you work out, you'll record your stats in the Trainerize app and you'll see how to do that a little bit later. And I'll update your workout program every four to six weeks based on your progress and how many workouts you have in your program. With nutrition coaching, we'll start with a few forms I'll have you fill out so I can find out a lot more about your daily habits and nutrition history. We will be taking different types of measurements fairly regularly, ranging from your weight to your body measurements and photos and anything else we throw into the mix, and you will see those scheduled in your program on your Trainerize calendar. Now on to communication. The majority of our messaging back and forth will take place over Trainerize messaging on your app. Please make sure your notifications are enabled in case I send you messages about updates regarding your program. I will respond to any messages you send me during my normal working hours Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. EST. Some clients will also have regularly scheduled check-ins, whether in person, on the phone, or over video chat. If that's part of your package, I'll send you a scheduling link so that you can choose out the time slot that works best for you. Communication is the most important part of this process. I will do my absolute best to be timely in responding to any questions you have and providing instructions for your program. All I ask in return is that you please make an effort to respond to any messages I send you within 48 hours of the initial sending. This is just so I can serve you best and make sure that we're both on the same page with your process. If you are a one-on-one -on -one coaching client, I'll be building your program around whatever equipment you have available to you. If you ever want to use new equipment in your program or if you want to try new exercises, be sure to send me a picture of the new equipment or the new exercise so I can incorporate it into your program. I'll always be there to adjust exercises as needed for my full-fledged coaching clients. If you are a group coaching client, either in person or online, Please keep in mind that your options for your workouts are in gym or at home. When going through your workouts, if you're having an off day or if for some reason you need to swap out an exercise, I have a how-to video on how to switch out those exercises in my FAQ section. Now we're going to blaze through some workout terminology that may be important for your program. Resistance training or strength training are two interchangeable terms referring to lifting weights, doing bodyweight exercises, 
using resistance bands, or using any kind of machine equipment that's going to put resistance against your body as you're exercising. Cardio is any exercise that repeats itself for longer than 30 seconds, generally has minimal resistance, and the goal of it is to elevate your heart rate and get your sweat on. When I say workouts, I'm referring to each individual workout in your exercise program. You'll find in your Trainerize app that each workout will have a different name. That way, if we need to discuss any specific workout, you're able to talk about it by name. Exercise refers to each individual movement you'll be working on inside your workouts. So squat is an exercise, push-ups are an exercise, and running is an exercise. A set is a single grouping of repeating an exercise. So if you're doing a set of squats, that is one time that you're doing a certain number of squats in a row. Normally you'll have between two and four sets of an exercise, so you'll repeat groupings of that exercise with periods of rest in between. Reps or repetitions refers to how many times you repeat that exercise within those sets. So if I give you four sets of 10 on squats, you'll do a set of 10 repetitions on the squat, take a rest break, and then do your second set of 10 repetitions on the squat and repeat for all four sets. Weight refers to the resistance that you're using in an exercise. If you're using a dumbbell, a kettlebell, a barbell, or any other weight you can get your hand on, usually the weight is printed somewhere on that piece of equipment so you know how much to record in your Trainerize app. Keep in mind that increasing your weight is a great way to see progress, so make sure that you are pushing yourself with weight without putting yourself at risk. On some exercises in the Trainerize app, you'll see that you actually need to time the exercise as opposed to repeating repetitions. For example, with the plank, you'll generally hold the exercise as long as you can in one still position. When you are timing an exercise, you'll use a timer either on the Trainerize app or somewhere on your phone or a clock nearby and then record how long you're able to hold the exercise. In some cases, I will give you an assigned amount of time, so be sure to set your timer and do the exercise for as long as you're assigned. I don't use tempo much, but when I do, it's referring to how you're performing an exercise. An assignment for tempo would look something like this and refers to the timing within the exercise. The first number denotes how long the first portion of the exercise should take. If you're squatting down and the number is one, it should take you one second to squat down. The second number denotes how long you stay in that transition position. If the number is zero, then you would immediately transition into the next phase. The third number denotes the third portion of the exercise. In the case of a squat, it's the standing up out of the hole. If the number says three, then you would take three seconds to raise up to a standing position again. The last number denotes how long you wait before you repeat the exercise. If it says zero, you would go straight into the next repetition. When I say warm up, I'm referring to the exercises or cardio that you're doing prior to the main portion of your workout. The purpose of a warm up is to increase your heart rate, increase your temperature, increase your sweat rate, and also decrease the pH of your muscles, but you wouldn't actually know if that's happening. Sometimes I'll assign you a walk or some kind of cardio as your warm up. Other times, I'll assign you a certain grouping of exercises that I want you to walk through that usually require limited resistance but should work your entire body and get you warm. If we're going the exercise route for your warm up, you'll see on your Trainerize app that all the exercises are at the top of your workout and they're linked together, usually denoted by a yellow or green bar along the side. Rest or rest period refers to how long you're resting between sets of each exercise. On your Trainerize app, you actually have access to a rest timer. So if you know you tend to rush between sets of an exercise, Use that timer to give yourself some extra time to rest. It's super important that you're getting adequate rest between sets. If you're rushing from one set of an exercise to the next, generally you're not going to be able to exert as much energy into each exercise as you would if you were fully rested. For example, if I have you working on a strength portion in your program and we're doing fewer than 10 repetitions, you generally want to rest for 90 to 120 seconds between sets. Since you're doing such a low number of repetitions, the implication is that the weight you're using is very high. With the weight being higher, it does put your body at more of a risk if for some reason you do the movement incorrectly. Extra rest will ensure that you are primed and ready to go and able to do that exercise with maximum focus 
keeping yourself safe while maximizing your results. Superset refers to a grouping of exercises, usually two exercises back to back. The way that you would perform these exercises is you would do the first exercise, one set, and then immediately go into the second exercise with no rest between the two exercises. After completing the second exercise, you would rest for the assigned amount of time and then repeat both exercises. When I say circuit, I'm generally referring to three or more exercises placed back to back similarly to a superset. When performing a circuit, you'll do the first exercise, one set, go to the second exercise, one set, go to the third exercise, one set, and so on, and don't have any rest periods until after all of the exercises are finished, one set each. Then you would repeat the circuit from the beginning. A personal record or personal best is a great thing to celebrate. Generally, it means that you've lifted more weight on this workout than you did on a previous workout, or you've increased the amount of time that you've held a certain exercise, or you increased your volume of training a certain exercise, which basically means you lifted more weight or more repetitions for the same exercise. You'll see your personal bests or personal records at the end of each workout. Trainer Eyes will actually show you which exercises you've improved on. A barbell is a longer bar that you'll usually find in gyms. Sometimes there are Olympic barbells like these where the ends are super large and you need larger holes on the plates that you put on them. Plates are referring to the weights that you put on the end of your barbell. Usually they'll range in weight from two and a half pounds up to 55 pounds, depending on the type of weights your gym has available. Clamps are the little things that go on the end of a barbell just to make sure that the weights don't fall off the end while you're using them. A dumbbell is simply a hand weight and you generally want to buy them in sets of two so you can use them in both hands at the same time. Kettlebell refers to these bell-like weights and they can range in weight from 5 pounds all the way up to 200 plus pounds. Medicine ball refers to one of these weighted balls. They can be bouncy so they don't damage your floor or sometimes they're more like a sandbag where they won't bounce. Stability ball generally refers to one of these balls that everyone has lying around. They're sometimes called a yoga ball. A BOSU ball is a half one of these split right across the middle with a plastic piece on the bottom and they can be used for balance or for cushioning on the floor for certain exercises like the hip thrust. A bench simply refers to a weight bench that you would use for certain exercises in the gym. They're usually fairly heavy and sturdy so it's safe to perform lots of different types of exercises on them. It's usually good to have a mat with you in the gym. Usually gyms will provide them, but you can also grab your own at any department store. And it's also good to have them at home if you do any home exercises. There are lots of different types of bands that you can use, ranging from these circle bands that are connected on both ends, or you can also use rubber tubing. If an exercise calls for resistance bands, either of these types of exercise bands will work but the tubing will actually allow you to clamp on attachments at each end. It's sometimes good to have exercise gloves, which are simply fingerless gloves that you can slip over your hands, but they can prevent you from getting calluses. And when I refer to a machine in your workout, I simply mean any exercise machine that you find at a gym that's either powered by a pulley system or has some kind of system to make it simpler for you to get through your exercise without putting yourself at risk with the stability portion of the exercise. A spotter is a person who makes sure that you don't kill yourself while you're lifting weights. If you're going to be lifting heavy, it's good to have a spotter there anytime you're going to be lifting a weight above your head or other parts of your body. So anytime you're doing an exercise like the squat where you have axial loading, or if you're doing a bench press or an overhead press, it's good to have someone there in case the weight gets too heavy and you're not able to lift it back up. If you're using a spotter, make sure that they understand what their job is. They're not there to move the weight for you. Instead, their job is to be available in case you tell them you're not able to move the weight anymore. The only time they need to step in if you don't ask is if for some reason you reach failure and you are being crushed by the weight. <laughs> Another safety concept is space. If you're working out in a gym, make sure you have enough space surrounding you that you're able to get through your exercises without smacking into anybody with your weight. Even at home, Try to make sure that all of your things are put away and that you have a clean space to go through your exercises. It shouldn't be surprising how easy it is to trip over a stray dumbbell.
Next is etiquette. Try to be aware of your surroundings and notice when people are using certain pieces of equipment that you need to use. If you notice that someone has been frequenting a piece of equipment, maybe ask them if they're finished with the equipment before moving on to that exercise for yourself. If you're limited on time, sometimes it's a good idea to work in sets with another person. This means that when they're on their rest break between sets, you're able to perform your set of the exercise as well. If you're going to be doing this, be courteous and be sure to put the weight back to their setting before you leave. The same goes for using barbells where you're having to load plates. If you're working in sets with another person, make sure you help them change the weights out each time. Also make sure that when you're setting up your area that you're not getting in somebody else's way while they're trying to work out. Number one rule, just be aware of your surroundings when you're in the gym. Next is cleanliness. It should go without saying that you need to re-rack your weights when you're finished using them. When you're done with the barbell, put it back where it came from. When you're finished with all of your plates, put them back in the correct spot even if you got them from the wrong spot. When you're finished with your dumbbells, do your best to put them back in the spot designated for that weight of dumbbell. Same goes for kettlebells, mats, medicine balls, and any other equipment that you're using. Even if you're at home, it's best to always put your things away because cleanliness is much easier to deal with than a very messy, cluttered area. Also, particularly when you're at the gym, it's good to wipe down your equipment when you're done. Even though it seems the gym is for healthy people, lots of illnesses pass around the gym. So please make sure you wipe off any machine that you've been using, sitting on, touching, and any kind of weights you've had your hands on. Usually you will find some kind of sanitizer and wipes available in your gym. If you don't have them available, be courteous and bring your own. If you're in the gym, also be sure to watch out for your stuff. Some gyms will have lockers or cubbies to store your things, but you still need to keep your eye on it. Unfortunately, there are thieves everywhere, so if you have any valuables such as your phone that you don't want to carry on you, please be sure to leave it in your car. If you're using the Trainerize app, generally you'll want to have your phone with you to make sure you have a good place to stow it while you're going through your exercises. One of the most important factors referring to your safety and your overall enjoyment of your program is how comfortable you are with the program. If there are certain exercises in your program that you don't feel comfortable with, make sure you let me know so that I can swap them out. And I don't just mean physically. Sometimes when you're in the gym, you can feel a little uncomfortable going through certain exercises because you feel like people are watching you. I assure you that they're probably not watching you the majority of the time, unless you catch someone watching you. But it is important that you are motivated to work out and you're not feeling deterred by someone else getting in your way. One of the first steps that you can take is make sure that you're working out in an area of the gym that you are comfortable in. If you're a female and there is a female section of the gym, sometimes it's easier to work out in those sections because guys aren't allowed. Or it could be a good idea to choose a time to work out at the gym when other people aren't there since you won't have to worry about fighting for equipment anyway and there aren't as many eyes to worry about. But secondly, also be conscious once again of how your body is oriented when you're in the gym. If you do feel that someone is staring or the exercise is a little awkward, Try to put yourself in positions where you're more difficult to be seen. Sometimes working out in an off space, off against a wall, or somewhere in a corner is a little bit easier than having to do it in the middle of the floor. Regardless, if you feel that someone is violating you or they're doing something extremely inappropriate, be sure that you tell the management because that needs to be taken care of. It is not your responsibility to make sure that someone else is minding their manners. A couple of other miscellaneous points about your workouts. Workouts do not have to last a specific amount of time. Unless for some reason your schedule is limited and you need to make sure you pack in as much exercise as possible into that time frame, you really don't have to stay for a certain amount of time at the gym or even in your workout area. If you're working out in person with me, our workouts will tend to last from between 30 minutes to an hour, completely dependent on the type of exercises that we're doing. It's important not to dawdle whenever you're doing your workouts. Give yourself adequate rest, but make sure that you are pushing to get the workout done in a timely manner. Resting too long between sets will actually cause your body to cool down, and then you have to warm back up again in order to lift the same amount of weight or with the same amount of intensity. What's most important is that you're pushing yourself whenever you're doing your workouts. Sometimes that can be hard, especially if you're working out on your own, but try to set goals for yourself and push yourself in your repetitions and the weights that you're using. Also monitor the personal best that Trainer Eyes shows you at the end of each workout. Try your best to beat your personal best every time. Remember, the harder you push yourself in your workouts, and the harder those workouts are, the more your body will respond. That means increased strength, increased athleticism, and usually an increase in muscle mass and a decrease in body fat. 
Also make sure to notice the difference between pain and soreness. Pain is generally acute and usually comes on in the middle of a workout. Sometimes it's a stinging or burning sensation, and sometimes it doesn't come on in the middle of a workout. Sometimes it happens a little later and it's a bit of a dull ache that doesn't seem to want to go away. Usually this is an overuse injury or it's nerve related. If you are having pain, please be sure to let me know so that we can make any adjustments to your program we need. Sometimes that just means taking some time off from a specific exercise. Other times it means changing the exercise out entirely until your body is recovered. Soreness, on the other hand, is your body's response to training. It's sometimes called DOMS or delayed onset muscle soreness. Usually within the first day or two of your workouts, you'll start to feel DOMS. It also resembles pain in that there's sometimes a burning, but it's usually more widespread over the entire belly of a muscle. If you've been doing squats, sometimes it will feel like your quads, the top of your thighs are on fire, especially when you sit down or try to go to the toilet, but I assure you that it will go away even if it lasts a while. The more that you work out, the less you'll experience soreness. Believe it or not, the best way to cure your soreness is to actually do a similar exercise to what made you sore. You can try hot or cold showers, you can try hopping into ice baths, you can try stretching or yoga or meditation or sleeping or anything else and all of those might give you some relief. But if you can repeat an exercise that made you sore less intensely with fewer sets and fewer reps and less weight, you'll often find that your soreness will go away much faster. So even though it hurts, keep pushing. Another really important aspect of your training is your recovery. Recovery takes lots of different forms, ranging from your rest between your sets of exercises, how much sleep you're getting each night, and also how much you're exerting yourself throughout your daily activities. I know that the typical suggestion for sleep is always seven to eight hours of sleep every night. But the reason this is so important is because of the way that it affects not only your muscle recovery, but your hormone profile. If you're trying to lose weight, it's super important that you get adequate sleep because your hormones that are allowing your metabolism to increase or decrease are highly affected by those sleep amounts. You may find that if you incorporate more sleep, you start instantly seeing a weight drop if your goal is to lose fat. If you have more athletic or strength related goals, sleep is even more important because your body needs to recover in order to build more muscle to be able to do more workouts. Be sure to also monitor your daily stress levels. If your stress is getting extremely high, it's really difficult to focus on your goals and our coaching relationship. That doesn't mean that you need to back out of this relationship, but it does mean that you need to get a handle on your stress. Incorporating things like meditation or certain times to just sit and be quiet are gonna be great for your mental health. Incorporating regular therapy is good also. Just make sure that you're incorporating things into your lifestyle that are gonna allow you to de-stress mentally and physically so your body isn't always wired and you're able to relax. The next important point is about cardio. Unless you have specific athletic endeavors, I usually don't incorporate cardio into your program. That's not to say that you can't do cardio, but it's not something that I need to program for you. If you wanna incorporate cardio, I would suggest you incorporate a little bit before your main workouts, but do the majority of your cardio either after your strength workouts or on your off days. If your cardio is gonna be more intense, you generally don't wanna do it before your strength workouts because you need as much of your strength and power as you can muster to get through your workouts. You don't wanna be overly tired when you're trying to lift weights. Some great options for cardio are just using cardio equipment at the gym, using the built-in programming that's already on the equipment, or using any kind of cardio equipment you have available at your home. Remember that cardio is a very repetitive exercise, so it is easy to get overuse injuries whenever you incorporate cardio. That's not to say you shouldn't do it, but make sure you do it gradually. For example, if you're going to start running, maybe start off with a very short distance a very few days per week. When you're able to do that for a couple of weeks and you're sure that you have no pain, no shin splints, no hip issues, nothing of the sort, then you can start to gradually increase the distance that you're running. The other option is to simply increase the speed that you're running the same distance. You might find that you're not as susceptible to injury if you're keeping the distance the same, but you're increasing your speed, thus increasing the intensity. If you start to find that you are having an overuse injury from whatever type of cardio you're doing, whether it's plantar fasciitis or heel pain, any kind of shin splints, hip pain, shoulder pain if you're doing a rowing exercise, it's good to back off gradually from that exercise. That's not to say that you have to cut your cardio out completely, but it would be good to back off and give your body a chance to recover. If you're thinking that you need to incorporate more cardio in order to see more results as far as fat loss, 
please make sure you talk with me before doing so. The majority of our efforts with fat loss are generally going to be related to your nutrition. Remember that weight gain and weight loss is highly dependent on energy balance. How much you eat minus how much you're exercising equals your energy output and determines whether or not you gain weight, lose weight, or stay the same weight. If you're wanting to decrease your body fat, it's generally easier for us to control how much you're eating versus how much your body is expending. Because your energy expenditure is not a number we have a lot of control over. It's highly dependent on your genetics, your metabolism, and other factors that we can't control. So remember, let's focus on nutrition, and if you want to incorporate cardio simply because you enjoy it, then have at it. Last point about cardio, if you're going to be incorporating something like running, make sure you have good shoes. Anytime you're doing any type of workout, you want to make sure that you have decent clothing that you can move in, but you also want to make sure that your body is supported, particularly when you're going to be doing a repetitive exercise such as running. Whether you're training in person or online, we're going to use a couple pieces of technology to keep this process moving efficiently. The first one that I referred to a number of times is Trainerize. Trainerize is a great app because it allows me to build out your entire workout program, complete with all of your sets, your repetitions, any instructions I have for you, and each individual exercise has a video description of how to complete the exercise in each workout. You'll be using the app to log your workouts, that way we can see how you're progressing through each workout. Trainerize also has a messaging feature that's very convenient if you have any questions and it also allows me to send you updates about your program. You'll notice that Trainerize has a calendar. On that calendar, I will schedule body stats or other check-ins I'd like for you to do. It also allows you to keep track of which workouts you've already completed and if we've scheduled you any workouts, you'll find them on your calendar. You are able to go in and schedule your own workouts if you feel that you need to do so. Trainerize also has a new feature called Habit Tracking. If we're working on incorporating healthy habits, you're going to see those whenever you first open your Trainerize app on your dashboard. When you complete that habit for the day, you simply check it off and it'll pop up on your calendar that you completed the habit. Trainerize also has other features that allows us to keep track of your food intake, mainly by connecting with MyFitnessPal, but there's also a section for a meal plan if that's the route that we've gone. If you're using other apps or pieces of technology such as Apple or Fitbit, you're able to sync those with Trainerize also. Trainerize will show me what your sleep patterns are like, how many steps you've taken, and what your natural heart rate is. I have tons of how-to videos on how to use the Trainerize app. Just be sure to check out my FAQ for those videos. MyFitnessPal is another app that we tend to use fairly regularly in my coaching. MyFitnessPal syncs up with Trainerize, and I have some videos explaining how to sync those two apps, but it's also explained on the Trainerize app. With MyFitnessPal, you can log all of your meals, you can make adjustments to your calorie and macronutrient goals, and you're able to log your drinks as well. Since you're already logging your exercises with Trainerize, you don't want to log any workouts into MyFitnessPal because then it changes your goals and we don't really want to do that. I have tons of how-to videos for MyFitnessPal as well. Just be sure to check out the FAQ for those videos. You made it through the welcome video. Thanks for watching all the way through and paying attention. I will always try to be as succinct as possible anytime I'm giving instructions, so hopefully this video wasn't too long. If there's any information that I didn't cover in this video, please feel free to send me a message anytime. Remember that my number one goal in this process is to make sure that you get to the goals that you have set for yourself. In the process, we want to create new healthy habits so that you can continue this on for a lifetime. If you haven't already, please be sure to join my Facebook group, fill out any intake forms I've sent your way, and let's get this thing started. Happy lifting!